Hello. Um, so your institution has been around for quite a long time and is quite familiar uh, to, to many of the individuals here who have been along in the, in the industry for the last 10 years or so. But there are a lot of new faces here this year and a lot of new exhibitors. Could you perhaps give a little bit of an overview of uh, yourself, your position within uh, the Institute and the type of research that you're doing right now? So, thank you very much for the question. Yes, my name is Matthias Jan. I come from the Fraunhofer IKTS, located in Dresden. So, and I'm the head of the department, Chemical Engineering. And so, we are working on uh, high temperature electrolyzers, solid oxide electrolyzers, uh, the cells, but could also be operated as fuel cells. And uh, we are uh, coupling uh, the solid oxide electrolyzers, uh, for example, with the, the fischer tropsch synthesis, one topic we're working on. And when we look here at the, the title of um, this talk is um, the reduction of um, industrial carbon dioxide emissions. So there are two ways to do this. One is the CCU technology, carbon capture and utilization, and the other one is carbon direct avoidance. And in both cases, in both uh, these uh, possibilities, yes, to reduce the emissions, um, solid oxide electrolyzers can play an important role because we can produce hydrogen and also CO, not only hydrogen, we can produce with this technology directly syngas from CO2 and water, which then can be used for synthesis processes and also for the reduction of iron oxides, because with this we can uh, avoid the carbon dioxide emissions in steel industry. So in both cases, for a reduction of CO2 emissions, solid oxide is a key technology to do this. Can you talk a little bit about the advantages of a solid oxide um, electrolyzer in, in, in uh, comparison to a PEM, for example, uh, specifically regarding the, the heat component? Yes, what makes this technology unique, this um, solid oxide electrolyzer technology, is that compared to the low temperature electrolyzers, we operate them at 800 uh, degrees C and we can operate it endothermic so that we can use also heat for the production of syngas, this is one big advantage, so we need less uh, electric energy compared uh, to the low temperature fuel cells like alkaline cells and PEM electrolyzers. I have to say these are very, uh, for especially alkaline electrolyzers as well established technologies, so there are um, large systems on the market right now, so that's not available at the moment. Uh, for the solid electrolyzers, so this is really one, one challenge at the moment now to, to scale up uh, this technology because especially in these cases uh, where we have available heat, then it's very efficient uh, to produce hydrogen or syngas uh, with the solid oxide electrolyzers. So who would this be applicable, this technology, in terms of industrial applications for the coupling energy? Who, who, who would benefit from this te technology? So we are looking for, uh, for industrial partners who want to use uh, the CO2 from their emissions. That's, uh, the, um, and we are focusing on these applications where the carbon dioxide uh, emissions uh, cannot be avoided. That's um, lime works or cement works are potential applications which are very interesting for this technology because in these cases uh, this... Um, CO2 emissions are caused by the process, and so uh, it's not possible to avoid them. And we have a project now starting um, in January this year in the Limeworks, uh, where we uh, couple uh, the solid oxide technology for the production of syngas with the fischer tropsch process uh, to produce high valuable products like vexes. So if uh, we want to close this um, value chain here, it's important is uh, to use unavoidable CO2, what I said, um, and to produce high valuable products. So that's our focus here uh, in this field at the moment. Who are you doing this with right now in terms of your projects? I know that you're doing a couple of different projects, as you mentioned. Can you give a, elaborate, or elaborate a little bit about like who's involved in those projects and where they are regionally? Because there's a lot of international mm -hmm. okay. attendees. Yes. Um, in this project uh, called Colissi, uh, in Germany, uh, funded uh, by the Ministry of Research and Education. And um, there's a, we have one partner from the Limebergs, it's a company Bergmann Kalk uh, who is involved in this project. We have the company Amtech uh, who do the process development together with us. 
Uh, and uh, we also have the company DBI, DBE in, in German, and they are responsible for the CO2 separation because that's another interesting uh, point here in this, in this project. Uh, we are using here ceramic membranes for the separation of uh, CO2 from the off gas uh, from the Limeworks because that's also an important um, um, issue here. It's, it's, it's uh, really a challenge to uh, separate it and also to clean the gas and to make this um, cheap so that we can reach uh, economic feasibility for the process, so that we um, need uh, the, the technologies to, um, to make it uh, cheaper than today to produce CO2, and we need high valuable products uh, which can be then uh, can sell on the market. What have you seen in terms of the projects that have been done so far, in terms of r results from this different technology being used? Um, in terms of a case study, is there anything that you can speak to in terms of uh, results that have been seen so far within this um, integrated energy approach that you're using for the pro projects? You mean the CCU or the or in general? In just in, ge in, in general, general, yes. Yeah. Um, um, so I, perhaps I can add another project uh, we are involved. It's a, it's a study. And uh, with uh, one of our partners, it's Salzgitter uh, AG, um, and they're working on uh, in the field of um, yes, CO2 avoidance. And um, there you can find them in, in hall number five. And they have really an impressive installation there of this technology, where the direct uh, reduction technology is used to reduce iron oxide, and uh, with hydrogen. And you need uh, really a lot of hydrogen. So it's a, it's a plant in the first stage. I think it's 300 megawatt what they need. Uh, it's 300 megawatt uh, power of the electrolyzers for the first stage. And if you completely um, um, remove here these blast furnaces um, uh, there on their uh, plants, then they need about 1,000 megawatts. So a lot of, and that's. Uh, really one, one challenge is uh, what I said before to, uh, to increase here the power of the uh, solid electrolyte uh, lysis technology because it's very efficient and especially if you have uh, the heat there then um, this is really a challenge in the future yes, to, to produce the hydrogen as much uh, effective as possible. What do you see in terms of new potential markets for yourself um, regionally and in terms of applications? I know that we were speaking about um, production of, of like ethanols and waxes. Um, what does that mean for other industrial applications and potential industries that you could be working with? So, um, you mean the, <laughs> the application, for example, for, for different products? Yeah? Yes. Um, so. We are looking really for, for partners who in, to, uh, want to industrialize the, the um, uh, electrolyzer technology or we are looking for partners who want to um, um, produce um, chemicals or other products like waxes and tire alcohols um, uh, based on CO2, yes, and, um, and uh, who want uh, yes, to develop together with us these uh, more, uh, yes, uh, Yes, large scale uh, stacks and modules to, to increase the power. Is there funding opportunities for companies that want to get involved in that? Like, how would they go about to do that? Yes, um, there are uh, possibilities for funding in, in, in Germany, especially yet, um, if you look at these areas uh, where um, the uh, lignite at the moment is uh, wrapped from the, from the ground and we want to stop this, stop using uh, lignite and brown coal. Uh, there are programs uh, at the moment in Germany and also from the, from the European Commission we have these ETS Innovation Fund um, in which um, such pro uh, projects uh, could be funded also. Is there an application process that needs to take place for anyone, or can they contact you directly? Can they come see at the booth? How, how can they get involved if they want to be a part of these projects moving forward? So, yes, uh, we can get touch this <laughs> at our booth. And um, so, um, yes, what we're really looking for are companies um, who want to produce products yes, uh, from, from CO2 or um, CO2 intensive um, um, Yes, plants where the CO2 can be used from, and also companies want to use um, 
the, the solid electrolyzers who want to make uh, business with this. So three possibilities, I can say. Great. So it sounds like there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of different organizations here to get involved and a lot of opportunities for potential projects, both regionally and internationally. Um, I'm going to ask the audience if there's any questions at all. For the Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, I encourage you to go and get in touch and visit the booth E45. You can actually see the technology being displayed. It was too heavy to bring to stage, so if you want to see it and see how it differs, um, please go to booth E45 to do so. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. <laughs>